a bunch of times, and, and you do that by cooperating. Right? So maybe the strategy is for the first five or ten times to cooperate, um, risk this one to try to induce your partner to give you the six. Okay, so notice that the early choices that you make, this is not a one play prisoner's dilemma. And so the choices that you make early on very well may affect the choices of your partner later. So if you can get your partner to cooperate with you later on, by you cooperating now, that might be worth it. Does that make sense, or should I say that again? Okay. But now one more bit of strategy. On the last play, on the, on the 20th, on the final one, that's the last one. So you face a choice of cooperating and betraying on the last one. Because it's the last one, there's no hope of influencing your partner's choice on the next one. That's it. Those are the points. That's all that's going to be affected on that last one by your choice. There's no point in trying to be nice to your partner in hopes that she'll cooperate with you the next time because there is no next time. Right? So what's it rational for you to do on the last play? Right, obviously. There's no point in trying to induce cooperation at that point. This is the numbers that you're stuck with, and there's no further play after that. So on the last play, the rational strategy is to betray. And on the last play, the rational strategy for your partner is what? To also betray. For exactly the same thing. It's perfectly the same. So on the last play, it's rational for you to betray, and if your partner is rational, she'll betray you also. So on the second to last play, on the 19th round, you might have hopes of cooperating with her in order to get her to cooperate on the last one, but there's no way she's going to cooperate on the last one. We just saw that it's rational no matter what for her to betray you on the last one. So on the 19th play, you might have thought cooperating in order to induce her to cooperate on the last one would be rational, but it turns out it's not. Because no matter what, it's rational for her. No matter what you've done before, it's rational for your partner to betray on the last one. So it's rational for you to do what on the 19th? So on the first, cooperating might make sense as a way of influencing your partner's choice later on. But on the 19th, does that make sense anymore? Why not? Yeah, so why, why would being nice to your partner on the 19th Maybe get her to cooperate with you on the 20th. Because I, we just saw that it's rational for her to betray on the last one no matter what you've done. So the same thing with 19. On the 19th play, it's rational for you to betray because you have no hope of influencing what your partner is going to do if she's rational on the 20th. And your partner, if she's rational, will betray on the 19th, because if you're rational, she has no hope of influencing you on the 20th. So it's rational for both of you on the 19th to betray each other. And on the 18th, if you have no hope of influencing what your partner does on the 19th or 20th, what's it rational for you to do? And what's it rational for your partner to do? Okay, so this is called the zip back argument. And what it shows, what, what it actually shows, is that if there's a finite number of plays and you know what that finite number is, then it's rational to betray on each. Okay. 
And you do know how many there are. I told you, there are 20. Question? Okay, any other questions about? Uh, so actually, let's, um, let's do this. Why don't you grab your clippers? Let's take a quick poll here before we start. Still convinced that so maybe maybe what you're trying to do is even though I'm not revealing who it is maybe you want your partner to take you one of those three. Okay, so get started. Um, I'll say again, do these one at a time. That is, make your choice, show your partner, and figure out your score. Write that down. Then go to the next and go through all of them. 